So some of you asked about writer's block. I'm I'm in a weird school with writer's block. I don't really believe in writer's block. That doesn't mean I don't know that you can get stuck at writing. I just think there are so many ways out of it that you got to be aware of those if you're going to write and use them. So first off, I would say I'm really of, I'm really of the Henry James school. Henry James, the, the novelist, said basically just just write. Um, <laughs> that's really honestly how I do it as a writer. When I get stuck, I just start writing whatever the hell I want to write and maybe I'll get to somewhere. Maybe I won't. I mean, sometimes you have good days and bad days as a writer. That's okay. Um, I mean, even this with academic essays, some of them come out better than others do. That's just a little part of the process. I would say, write. Just start writing. Don't stop writing. Worst thing to do for writer's block is stare at an empty piece of paper or computer screen because you just stare at it. And then you get up and go mess around and you come back and you're staring at the same thing over and over. I mean, there's that great advice from Hemingway that you write until you want to take a break and you kind of plan breaks. Me personally, I, I always take breaks every about 15 minutes writing because I like I need to, to do other stuff. Maybe it's get a cup of coffee, check face, you know, social media or whatever it is. So I plan that as breaks, especially when I'm writing fiction. I don't do it as much when I'm writing poetry, but I'm writing fiction. I do it a lot. So but when I get to that point where I want to take a break, I always write on my computer, I always write by computer. Write them by computer where I want to go to next when I get started. I'll do that with poems even. I'll write like, okay, talk about this next. Go in that direction so that when I sit back down, I can keep going. Other ways to get out of writer, writer's block, there's some classic ways. And actually, one of our weeks in this class deals with this. But it's actually do collaborative writing. It's when you're writing with somebody else, they're kicking out ideas that aren't your ideas. That kind of forces you to respond to them. So a lot of a lot of professional writers really do use collaborative writing to do that. And it's become very popular lately, especially there's a lot of collaborative books coming out uh, lately that really are ways to get past that idea of not knowing what to write about. Other things, of course, you know, writing in a form will force you to come up with something. I mean, for example, if you can't write, I know, and maybe you don't want to write in forms, which is fine, but it can kick you off into something else. It's like if you sit down and you're like, okay, I can't think of what to write. Try to write a limerick. Try to write a haiku. Try to write uh, a sonnet. And the form itself will come out. The poem you actually produce might be horribly bad. It's okay. Because it at least got ideas out and it can get you started writing, which is the key. I find haikus work pretty well for me with this or haikus because they're short. You can kick them out and it could be about anything. It could be about how you can't write. And that could kick you into some other idea, which is, is really what you want, is want to get your ideas flowing. I think this is especially true if, you're, if you've are if you been away from the literary for a bit. So, for example, you know, like for those teachers, like you're in the middle of teaching all this stuff, but you're, you're not really being creative all the time because you're, you're dealing with student issues. Uh, you know, as creative writers, if you're in the creative writing program, doing creative writing, but it's not your timeline of creative writing. It's for, it's for classes. So sometimes that kicks in this weird thing where you, where you get stuck. So, you know, other ways, pull up a list of topics. If you're writing as a poet, pull up a list of topics. Um, the same thing is true of fiction writers. Pull up a list of, of, uh, of plots. There are also fiction devices, brainstorming devices. There are a lot of brainstorming devices for fiction for how to come up with stories, uh, if you search online, you'll find them and they're pretty helpful because then, you know, you just follow the brainstorming pattern, the path, and you'll come up with 10, 15 stories that you just weren't popping out on your own really quickly. With poetry, I think you can also look for sample topics and there's a whole bunch of these. And that in itself will make you want to write to get started writing. There are a variety of ways of doing it. I mean, the thing you shouldn't do is just sit and stare at, at the paper or the computer. That that doesn't help anybody. I mean, it really just doesn't. And even sometimes when you're doing academic work, the best way to do it is like, if you're stuck, go look and see what a critic says about it. Go take a look back at the text and see what jumps out. Or literally, go take a walk. And, you know, we all know from all the research that those ideas are still going in the back of your brain. So when you sit down the next time, they'll pop out.
So maybe that was helpful. Maybe not. I kind of feel like I just, I guess, gave you the advice of like, if you don't know how to swim, jump in the pool. But a letter with writing, you got to write. One of the, the biggest problems I find with a lot of writers, especially older people, you know, if you get 40s and 50s and you always want to write 60s, whatever it is. And you always talked about writing. Well, guess what? Writers just write, like literally. Stop talking about wanting to write. Stop talking about wanting to do a novel. Just sit down and do it. I think with with poems, sit and write them. You know, write a draft. You could write a draft of five poems in a day. It doesn't mean any of them are going to be any good, but it could be a draft. With a novel, you know, if you literally sit down, think about word count. Write 500, 500 words a day in a novel. That's not actually that much, right? That's two pages, maybe. You do that. The novels are what? 50,000 words, 70,000 words right in there. You do that every day or every other day. You know, a year later, two years later, if you do it every other day, you got to have a novel. I mean, if you if you go to like, you know, Stephen King, who's writing 2,800 words a day, 3,000 words a day, you can write two novels a year doing that. If you just sit down and do it five days a week during the week, take the weekends off, it's pretty good. So write is basically the idea.